When Google launched its Pixel 6 in 2021, there were many things unconventional about its release. From the months of public teasing of the actual phone design to the phone design itself, it was all rather unconventional. It drew people's attention and became something of a surprise hit among tech enthusiasts, at least if our video watch numbers are anything to go by. So, with that launch now being a few months behind us, Samsung's latest flagship is on the market. The S22 adds to a long line of flagship Samsung phones with top tier performance. So how do the two compare and which should you buy? I'm Cam Bunton from Pocket Lint and in this video I'll hopefully help you to decide. And while you're here if you could hit that like button, tap subscribe and the notification bell, that would be wonderful. I don't know how many times I've said or heard something along the lines of smartphones are all glass rectangles nowadays, they're all the same and broadly speaking it's true. But with the Pixel 6 and Samsung's latest Galaxy series we see two quite different approaches. And it doesn't matter which side you look at them from either, they're quite different. But saying that, the two phones are incredibly similar when it comes to size. They're a similar height, width and thickness, although technically the Pixel 6 is ever so slightly wider, taller, thicker and heavier than the S22+. Plus. It's a testament to Samsung then that despite this, it's got the bigger screen. When you consider this is the larger of the two non-Ultra S22 models, and there's an even smaller one, that's saying something. The bezels around the screen are much thinner than the Pixel, and that black frame around the display is close to being uniform all the way around, and even matches the curves of the corners, hugging the inside of the frame really closely. Pixel 6 has a chunkier, more right-angled look. It's quite striking when you put the two side by side. Where Pixel gets it right, we feel, is in the shape of the phone. It might be big, but because the glass curves are on the back and the aluminium edge has a more pronounced rounding, it does feel comfortable to hold. Samsung's is very flat, giving more of an extreme edge between the glass and the frame. The other thing worth noting, of course, is the Pixel's camera hump. It is unusual, but does mean that if you place it flat on its back, it won't wobble. From a durability standpoint, the Samsung should be longer lasting and more resistant to impact. It has Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the front and on the back, with what it calls armour aluminium around the frame, which it says is more durable and scratch resistant than before. Pixel uses Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and Gorilla Glass 6 on the back, so it's still pretty sturdy itself. And both are water and dust resistant to IP68 levels, tested to the same 1.5 meter depths for up to 60 minutes. Moving on to the displays and the Pixel 6 screen sits somewhere between the S22 and the S22 Plus at 6.4 inches, where the S22 Plus is 6.6 .6 inches and the S22 is 6.1. It's not all that different when it comes to resolution, they both have Full HD Plus screens, and with Samsung's being slightly larger, you get a tiny bit less pixel density, but you'd be hard pushed to see any difference with your eye. Overall, the two screens offer a great experience in terms of colour, brightness and contrast, but there are a couple of things that swing the display experience in the favour of Samsung. The main thing you notice, and surprisingly, is the size. The extra real estate means that when you're watching videos or gaming, everything's just that bit bigger and gives content a more immersive and expansive feel. You get those bright highlights that are definitely brighter on the Samsung thanks to the higher peak brightness and generally higher brightness overall. With both screens set to their natural mode, there's not a huge amount of difference at all in terms of how colour appears on the screen. Neither is overly warm or saturated and they're very similar. Look at them from an angle though and you will see a difference in colour shift. Pixel seems to lean a bit more towards the pink, where Samsung skews towards green. Samsung also has the bonus of faster refresh rates, but we're not talking something that's easy to see with the eye here. It's 120Hz versus 90Hz, and most of the time, since most content isn't even refreshing that fast, there's not really any noticeable difference. However, Samsung is more capable of saving battery with it being able to automatically drop as low as 10Hz. That means that what we saw was a little bit more initial stuttering when we went from a static screen to a moving one. Like when you're reading Twitter or a web page and swipe to go home. It doesn't seem to switch between refresh rates as smoothly as some others do. The Pixel didn't appear to stutter like that at all, which makes sense given that with smooth display turned on, it only goes as low as 60Hz. On to performance and battery, and when it comes to raw power, there's something of a mismatch here. Samsung's S22 is powered by a flagship quality processor, where the Pixel isn't really. In the UK market, it's the Exynos 2200 in the S22, and the Pixel of course has the first gen Tensor processor. 
Now, of course, benchmarks aren't everything, but when you run them, you do see that Samsung has a considerably higher score, especially when you look at the multi-core score compared to the Pixel. It was around 3,300 points versus 2,400 on the Pixel 6. But despite the difference in numbers, the actual feel of using each phone was very similar. Even when comparing app load times, there wasn't a huge difference in how quickly they loaded up different apps and games. Whether it was Social Media, or Asphalt 9, or Real Racing 3, or Call of Duty. Samsung would often load a split second quicker than the Pixel, but there really wasn't much in it. Sometimes the Pixel would even load it quicker. It wasn't consistent one way or the other. And either way, neither was slow, and both feel speedy and fluid most of the time. Both phones could get warm under load too, but Samsung's warm spots seem to be further up the rear of the phone. So you wouldn't necessarily feel it when holding it one-handed, where the Pixel seems to get warm in the bottom half so you do feel that. As for actual battery life, Pixel has a higher capacity, but again, the actual difference between the two in real everyday use is minimal. We didn't see a huge difference with our usual two to three hours of screen time a day split between social media and a bit of casual gaming. Most days we'd use between 55 and 60% of the battery between 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. I would say, however, I am quite a light user, so you might see different if you use your phone a lot more than I do particularly if you live in a 5G area. Now, moving on to the all-important cameras, and Samsung has one clear advantage here. It's got an extra lens. The telephoto zoom lens means you can zoom up to three times, and the picture is pretty much as sharp and well-balanced as the shots from the ultra-wide and primary camera. Pixel has the main and ultra-wide, and although it can zoom two times to good effect with good detail, it's not as pin-sharp as the three times on the Samsung. Otherwise, comparing the two phones' pictures in daytime revealed some interesting differences. Samsung, in our experience, likes to go for that colour-boosted look, where blues and greens in particular are a bit oversaturated. Pixel's colours just made the photos seem a bit more natural to our eyes. Samsung also seems to up the contrast a tiny bit too, so this extra contrast and colour does make the photos seem more dynamic. That boosted contrast, increasing the range between the highlights and the shadows, gives that slightly artificial sharpness to photos. Where Pixel's approach definitely seems to be evening out the difference between highlights and shadows and making it a bit more natural. There's not a massive amount in it though, but we preferred the end result from the Pixel 6. Selfie cameras were quite different, with the Pixel in daytime at least getting quite crushed and contrast heavy. At least with my skin tone. Now, like we mentioned in the daylight photos, there's a difference in the way the two phones approach highlights and shadows, and that means even here, Samsung's phones are more contrast heavy with brighter, sometimes overexposed highlights and dark shadows. Pixels may not pop as much, but again, it even out the difference, making it a bit more of a natural picture. In other low light conditions, we also found the Pixel did a better job of reducing the noise in the shadows. One thing we will say is that the night mode capture on the Samsung is considerably quicker than the Pixel. But with the results you get from the Pixel, to our eyes at least, are more natural and impressive when there's really low light levels. There is obviously appeal to Samsung's approach though, especially when it comes to that artificially sharp look. It does make images pop a bit more, and that might be exactly what you want. Onto software and which software is best is a purely subjective thing. I'm a big fan of the redesigned Android 12 on the Pixel with the big colourful controls and the way the interface automatically adapts and changes to the colours of the wallpaper. You do still get that element with the Samsung, but with a more traditional Android interface, with small quick toggles and controls. Samsung comes loaded with quite a lot of Samsung's own apps and services too, which can be a bit of a pain to work around, but if you don't like those, you can always download and install Google's anyway. And many of them come with those redesigned widgets, so you can even get your home screen widgets looking more pixelish. The big thing here for Pixel, of course, is when Google releases a major Android update, you generally get it straight away. And you can sign up to be part of the beta very easily if you want to try new software before it's released. However, Samsung has massively improved its upgrade game recently, launching updates quicker and faster than it ever has done before, particularly when it comes to security updates. And they will support updates for a good few years. In many ways, it's become the example to all other Android manufacturers. So here's the thing, I think, when comparing these two phones. Samsung's hardware in some departments clearly outperforms the Pixel. That's particularly true when comparing the displays and the speed and overall performance. However, it costs a lot more to buy. My thoughts are that if the thing you care about most is cameras and you really don't want to empty your bank account, the Pixel 6 will do what you need. And personally, I really enjoy the software experience on the Pixel. And that's something you can't really measure objectively. It's purely subjective. 
I just happen to like it a lot more. However, if you want the phone with the slightly faster performance and the better display, get the Samsung. I've been Cam. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments section down below. You can get me on Twitter as well if you want to. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell. And then you don't miss any more of our uploads. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.